So ODBC can work a couple of different ways. Basically, it's uh, the computer is able to connect to an, a data source and then reference that for, for um, programs on the computer so that the programs don't have to try and reach out and figure out connection and communication with different databases. Those are all managed through the o ODBC. And all it, all it does is it just connects to that ODBC via a driver. And when it connects to it, then it's able to reference the data, the data source. Um, so you have to set it up per client machine in order for it to work. Um, and you can do it on the system or you can do it at a user level, but, um, but it isn't something that's transportable from one machine to another. You have to set it up on each machine. Um, so, so in this instance, in order to connect to FileMaker, through ODBC, we need to use an, a FileMaker uh, ODBC driver. And that's finally gotten a lot easier because there used to be some like third party ODBC drivers and like you had to pay mm -hmm. for them. And so they've got the download site now that you can go to and, and pull them down. So if you pull down the Windows downloader and, and install it, then it'll install the drivers for you to be able to make that connection. So then once you install it, um, and it didn't like I downloaded it and um, ran the executable and it didn't seem like it installed it. So I ha had to actually find it again to, <laughs> to figure out where it, um, where it was at uh, ODBC. So there was a client installer, Windows 32 version or 64 bit version. And so depending on what your app is, that's going to communicate with the ODBC solution or o ODBC data. So if, if you're running Excel in, 64-bit mode, then you would need to use the 64-bit driver. And if you're using Excel in 32-bit mode, then you need to use the 32-bit driver. Um, from what I understand, I might might be off just a little bit. I, Excel might be able to toggle between the two, but I, I wasn't getting that from what I was reading. Um, and so in the ODBC manager, where you set up the data sources, there's a 32-bit version and there's a 64-bit version. And so you'd set up the driver appropriately um, based on which one which environment you're going to work. Hopefully going forward in the future, everything will just be 64 bit, but we're still, we're still hanging on to 32 bit, um, you know, yeah. for compatibility sake. So after installing the driver, then you can launch your ODBC uh, administrator and you can either set a user or a system level uh, DSN. Uh, or yeah, is it DSN? <laughs> yes, DSN. Data source name. I believe, Data source right? name. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Which I always I was getting confused with DNS for a while. There, <laughs> yeah. so one to keep uh, yeah. keep an eye out for. So adding uh, adding it is pretty straightforward. Once the driver is installed, it's really easy to add. Um, without the driver, you're kind of SOL. Uh, so you just add, and then you select the driver. And in this case, it's FileMaker ODBC is showing up. So hey, there it is. So with the driver. It's pretty straightforward. It just walks you through it. It says, what is the name that you want to refer to this data source as? And we'll call this like test uh, contact. And then you can put a description or whatever. And that's just, you know, is it going to be a local host um, or where do you want to connect? And this would be, you know, for us, it's going to be Cedar at Portage. Uh, okay. Now, can you import this configuration between uh, yes. clients? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, and then, you know, so I put in the domain of our FileMaker server and connect to host to get the databases available. And um, if there's not an SSL, you know, give me a warning, that kind of stuff. Um, I should point out that you do need to go onto the, the server initially. So there's a little bit of setup first before you can connect this ODBC. We need to go onto uh, the server that you're gonna host from and enable using admin console, uh, enable ODBC, JDBC. Um, and then once it's enabled, then the other part that you have to do is you have to go into the actual file. So here I've got contacts that's on Cedar and um, you need to set security. So you need to go under security. And in this case, I have a full access account that I'm, I'm enabling. You wouldn't normally do this, but you know, just for testing. So in, under the full access, if I edit it, um, this is not turned on by default. Uh, and so you need to enable at access via ODBC for this solution to be able to use the ODBC or allow that to pass through and connect to this solution. So that's the first part is setting that permission. Um, once you've got that permission set, then you need to also 
under sharing, select share with FileMaker or, or enable ODBC, I'm sorry, enable ODBC. And in there we would say, uh, you, know, you would turn it on and then you can specify whether it's gonna use all users, special, special privilege set or no users. So you could, I, I think you might be able to override uh, if you set special privilege, privilege sets, but this, you know, using it specified by user, users by privilege set, I think is the way to always go. And that way you can fully control it. So once that's enabled, then this, this, dat, this is available for access. Isn't that the ODBC driver? What's that? Isn't that the ODBC driver? The list I think it is. What it looked like. That's I think what's it, running I think it in is. the background. Yeah. Oh, maybe because, yeah. The listener. I think so, that's the. So here, yeah. So after I've set that, now I can connect to that contacts database on FileMaker. So I put in the, the domain, you know, the address of the server, connect to the host to get the file, uh, to get the names of the databases. So I click next. Um, the database, this is where then I would select the one that I want to do. So I'm going to say contacts. Um, you can do additional settings. I'm not going to worry about those. Um, next. And there it is. We can test our connection. This is where we key in our username and password. Uh, if it's successful, we are good. We can, we can proceed. If it's not, then, you know, you've got issues, <laughs> but it's usually pretty straightforward at that point. Um, and if you can't get a connection, then yeah, you, you know, rabbit holes, but it's, it's usually pretty straightforward. So now it's, it's there, right? I've got my contact or test contact that I just created. And so now that's accessible by applications on the on this machine uh, for the any, this user, I can access it. If I put it under system, then anybody who logs in on this computer would have access to it under the system DSM. But as it's a user, I just put it at user level. If I logged out and somebody else logged in on this machine, it wouldn't be accessible um, to a, a different user. They would have to add it for each user. So you can control access without having to you can control access at the, at, the, at the client machine, which is useful as well. And then, like you said, Joe, for automatic de automating deployment, you can take this ODBC uh, and, and at, there's different ways to automate deploying it. So you don't have to do this manually on each machine, but, um, but that's, a gotcha. different, um, that's a different conversation. Yeah. So once that's good, now, uh, now let's connect stuff. So let's open up... Uh, Excel and Excel, if we do it just a blank workbook um, and we go under data, this allows us to add data sources to our Excel spreadsheet. And you can go from a text, right? Or from a web page, um, but we can get different things. So we can get them from a database and that's what we're gonna do if we wanted to do SQL um, or we can get them from, so if we had an SQL server, that's where we would connect to. and I don't believe that one requires an ODBC. That would just be connecting to a SQL source. So we have a SQL server running, you know, up in a cloud somewhere, wherever it is, just connecting to it in the same way you would connect to any SQL service. Um, for uh, this instance where we're using ODBC, we would say from other sources, and then you could, you know, you could do it from the web or whatever, but the one we want is from OB ODBC here. And so we'd select that. And then that references the 32-bit driver since this is the 32-bit version of Excel. And now I can select which one. And so you can see my test contact is the one that I had created. And there's some advanced options, but I, I won't go into those. So I say, okay, and it goes ahead and connects to that ODBC connection. This is where I enter in my, app, in my credentials, right? To be able to connect to it. So it knows that it's there and, and the communication can happen, but the credentials are now managed through whatever source is connecting. So if I was logging in as a different, um, yeah, I could log into that data source as a different uh, user and get different permission sets there. So we'll go ahead and connect. It does it just like uh, the ODBC test. And now we've got the navigator, which lets us look at that test contact. And the, the only table we have in there right now is contacts. And so I can click on that and I can, I can see the information that's in there on that contacts and I can load it or I can transform it. And for this instance, I'm just gonna load it. And what that does is it just takes whatever's data is there and it's gonna populate it. So if I had, if I add another record in here in my table and we call this uh, Mr. 
beta test. Um, so it doesn't automatically refresh here, but if I come back into my um, data tab and I say refresh all, now you can see my beta test is, is now in there with, with data as well. So, so that's, that's how difficult, it's fairly straightforward and fairly easy to connect via ODBC from an Excel file. And then of course, at this point, you can reference this in Excel. This data is, is stored now in this Excel file. Uh, it just has this connection rolling in the background so they can refresh it whenever they want. Um, there are other features and stuff, but I, I haven't, uh, haven't played with those or gotten into those. Um, the other thing to note would be uh, if we, so let's see here, if I take this and we will delete this out and we will do another connection, get data from a data source, ODBC, so you can connect to multiple different sources via this technique, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do uh, the test contact again. And here's my contacts and let's do the transform data. Now transform data allows you to designate where you want the data coming in from to go to. Right, so here's the source and so on and so forth. And I'm, I haven't played with this at all, but I'm guessing you're gonna end up saying, if you had a, if you had a, pre, if you had a table in here already, uh, you could tell it where you want to put the information from the input source and designate that out. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I, I think I was, you know, there was a little bit of confusion about, can you have the ODBC, um, DSN on the server and connect to it. And unfortunately, and I, you know, unfortunately you can't, what it, that DSN is only good for that local, that, that computer that's on locally. So if you did set up an ODBC on the server using, you know, it would, it would be, you would need to do that if you wanted a, a FileMaker server script to be able to access or do something with the ODBC. Uh, data that's connected to it. Like, let's say you had a nightly script that needed to run and it was connecting or communicating with some other data source. Doesn't have to be FileMaker, any data source. Uh, and it needed to do something. You would need to enable that on the server so that the server can access, uh, access that data source. Um, just, as though, just as we did here, basically the, you know, the server has its own um, user and it would use that user to connect in the same fashion we're doing here. Thank you.